Hello and thanks for watching my video. In today's demo, I'm going to be showing you a web application called PostDB. This project I started early 2015. Now PostDB is a transaction processing system made to run entirely on your web browser. The code base is entirely JavaScript and it has a SQLite database in the back. I had the pleasure to design the schema myself for the database and also make all the interfaces that I'll be showing you today. Now the web application is being hosted on a Node.js server where we get to leverage some of the really nice asynchronous goodnesses that comes with it. So today's demo will include me showing you the code and me showing you how to get the project running and maybe traverse some of the pages to take a look and check out some of the functionalities. Now to get started, you have to download the zip file from my GitHub repository. So when the download finishes, you'll be given a zip file. Extract all the contents of the zip file into a directory of your choosing. Then open up Terminal or PowerShell. I will use PowerShell because I'm on Windows right now. And CD into the directory that you have your contents that were just extracted to. Mine's in PostDB. The first time you run any Node project, you should always run the npm install to install any missing dependencies. Nothing happened for me because all my dependencies are fulfilled. But you may run into all sorts of problems such as losing dependency for SQLite, connect SQLite, or express session. If you see any of those names or dependencies that are missing, just run these commands that I've written down on my GitHub page. To physically start the web application, you'll need to run npm start. Usually your dependencies will fail at this point if you don't have them during this command. If you see this after npm start, it means node server has successfully started. To browse onto the web page, you can just go open up a new tab, go to localhost port 3000, which is probably going to be the setting that you will need to go to as well. As soon as you start, it lets you log into the actual application. On my GitHub page, there's a list of users with different roles. Uh, in this little table at the bottom. Each user has actual different, actually different accesses in the actual application. So I will log in as Charlie as a super user so we can see everything but the account and the accountant employee manager may have different access paths and may not see certain pages. So I will log in. Luckily my password is already saved in here. I will submit and open up the web application. Now this is the front page. This looks just like an ordinary post software where they have a list of different products that the company offers and also a tab. This interface shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody who's worked in the retail. Simply click on something that you want to purchase where the client is trying to purchase. You can up the amount or you can set it to zero which will delete it. And then when you're going to purchase, open up the uh, cash drawer, tender however much, gives me ten dollars, gives back the change, and finalizes the sale. Now the cool thing about this front page is this grid loads dynamically and is also paginated. So if my browser is smaller than it should be and I refresh the page, it should actually show the, the actual amounts that I can see right here. And it's still paginated. Now if I go back, it loads more data because it knows that I can see them. The search by also works very fluently. You can search by a SKU number that you see here, or you can search by the product name, by Apple, or by 100986, and you get filtered your, the product that you would like to find. Now the bar up here is actual categories that each product belongs to. When you click on a category, your products are filtered based on that general category. Of course, a category may have subcategories and you can increase the amount of filtering by going deeper down the filtering tree. And here we see only headgear from our clothes category. Overall, I try to keep the main page as simple as possible, yet give these big shiny buttons so it will work with a touchscreen monitor. Now let's move to another page. This post system is useless if I can't add my own products in them. So I've made a product page where I can add different categories and products that to show in my front page. 
I've got some categories here that I've previously made and you can make changes to anything that you see here by clicking on them. You'll load up the details and also the modal where you can add and delete products with. The, the, this works the same way with the categories. Now let's add a product on our own. So let's give it a nine digit skew and then pick a category. I can pick a general category or I can pick a more specific category. If I just go with electronics, maybe maybe a monitor because there was a computer uh, subcategory, I can make it, no, 299, that's more like it. That's how much my monitor costs. So it says, add was successful, you may continue. Because the Moodle doesn't close, users can continually add products as soon as they finished one. This way it streamlines the process of getting the system up and running by your clerk or by an employee. And you should be able to find the monitor inside this grid, like right there. The search works very well to search basically anything. Any SKU numbers that you want to search or any product name, details, categories even, office supplies. It just is lightning fast. This grid is actually jQuery data table library that I imported. So I've set it up so that it does quick filtering and quick searches for my product page. The category is the same idea. You open up this modal, you give it a name, you can also choose a parent category or you can create a parent category if you don't choose one and create subcategories on top of that. This is how you add products and you can also of course show more products of the page. But um, maybe next I should show you how to manage your users and give permissions throughout the web. So you might be the owner of the merchandise store that is using this application. You want to control what each user sees in the application. Like you don't want your accountant to know about the products. You definitely don't want your employees to know about the sales, the complete sale data. You just want the accountants to do their thing. Here in Manage Users, you can give multiple users uh, an account to basically work on and also have their information tied here so that you could email them per se. The types of jobs are three, four different categories. Manager who have the ability to uh, change or add users. Employees who have the ability to make sales. Admins to, can do anything and accountants can only access the sales. Employees can also add products. That's right. So if you want to make changes to one of my users already in the list, you just click on them and have their data instantly added to the, to the uh, pre-populated fields. You can change anybody's name. And you can also change their password. As a super user, you have the ability to change everybody's passwords. But if you were an employee, you can't change the super user's passwords per se. Now, clear, clearly, there's a clear button. and. I've also kept a similar layout where there's a left panel and a major main right panel. I find this, this layout to be very fluid across all pages of my web application. Next, we move on to a very important component, something that makes a point of sale system work. The ability to trace all sales transactions you've ever made since the beginning of installation. Now, as you can see here, today I've only made one sale, and that must be at the beginning of this demo when I was playing around on the front page. If you click on this transaction ID, you can see that I bought one chicken breast for one for 519. Now, I see right now we're scoped towards August 14th today, but if you want to see how you did in sales on a grander scale, you can choose a year to check out all the sales you've made that year. 21,792. Great. Now, some of these sales are in April and some of these sales are in March. So we can further scope into the month that we want to see to check out the sales at a more finer detail. So here's March. We've made 15,000. It was a good month, but given that we only opened for one day, and that's the 29th. All the records come back to the 29th. So we can scope to, to the 29th and see all the sales made by John Doe who is working a poor John Doe on a Sunday evening selling lots of more merchandise. Let's check out what this guy bought. Wow, 11 bottles of champagne and 10 bottles of red wine. He's definitely having a party for sure. 
Now this grid is the same idea as the product page. You can search by any single row from any single column at all at once. If I want to find anything with a 39 in it, everything comes out. So there's a 39 here and the total sales sum dot 39. So it's very useful if you know what you want, but you can also get even more precise answers if you type in the full query string that you want to look for. This is also paginated or you can basically view all all the rows by increasing the entry count. So this is the last page that I wanted to show you and it's the last useful page in my web application. We can switch back to the previous pages and check out how fast everything loads. The reason why it's fast is because everything is done on the client side. I'm no longer requesting for more than one page. It's a single page application where I'm, all I'm doing is switching out components on the page which do not require the entire page to load with all the CSS, with all the JavaScript files. Therefore it's, it's lightning fast. So this concludes my demo of my PostDB web application. You can get the code from my GitHub account anytime you like and try to run it on your local system. Play around with it if you want and try to break it. So thank you for watching my video and hope you have a great day.